So apparently there's two epidemics going around right now. We have the, I'm not gonna even say the name of this, but we also have the TikTok epidemic. Now, if you're anything like me, with my free time, I just spend it on TikTok, scrolling through content, and I've been noticing this strange occurrence. Basically, every single TikTok is like really the same. I'm not sure if I'm just watching too much Charlie D'Amelio, but I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and it's literally the same video. Like, let me show you. Where the fuck is my phone? Okay, so I kind of have to bleep the music out because of copyright, but just get this. Okay, and I'm just gonna swipe once and look what happens. So this got me thinking, if a virus is technically a widespread occurrence of something that happens at a certain time, then maybe TikTok is the same way. Maybe trends and viral content happen so fast that it's as viral as some disease. So why is that? Today's video, we're gonna talk about why that happens, why TikTok has such viral success, and what this means as a creator if you're trying to be TikTok famous. If you wanna know more, all you gotta do is keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jade, and if you're new to my channel, I combine psychology and marketing to give you guys the best tips and tricks about how to grow on social media. So I'm just gonna dive right in. I wanna thank you guys for watching my past TikTok videos. You seem to love it, and I'm just gonna keep making more of them. So give this a thumbs up if you are so far hyped, not hype house. So let's just start with the most obvious question. Jade, why are all my TikToks the same too? I can't be the only one here, right? Like, I'm sure we've all scrolled, and it was like the same sound, same audio, same girl dancing, renegade, right? And you're probably wondering, like, why is that? Now, to understand this question, we need to understand the TikTok algorithm. I actually have a whole video of me explaining it, but here is the recap. TikTok was made to only do one thing, which is to keep you on the platform for as long as possible. The way they measure and how they want to push videos is based on content that makes people stick. So basically, if a viewer, right, is watching a video for the full 15 seconds, TikTok's going to note this video as a good video and promote it to more people because it makes people more addicted. I know it doesn't sound that ethical, but that's how they make money, right? Advertisers don't want to spend money on an app if people aren't using it all the time. So when you think about it, when you're working on TikTok's algorithm, you really just only want to increase viewership for their own app. So content that is loopable or people watch for a long time is most likely going to get promoted. When you think about it, they just want to find the easiest way to know what to push. So if they find a certain song or dance watch for a long time, they're just going to keep promoting that same piece of content that's tied to it because they just don't want to, you know, guess. So to answer a question, the reason why your TikToks might be looking the same in an algorithm point of view, TikTok's just trying to promote content that they think people are going to love. So they're just going to shortcut it by using the same audio, same dances, and similar creators. That's why on TikTok, there might be a less variety of content because the more you scroll, the more it's going to recommend you stuff that's similar to what you liked before. So if you're watching this video, you're like, cool, Jade, I get it now, but why am I still here? Well, Sally, thanks for being here because today we're actually going to dive into how this is actually affecting TikTok creators. I had the opportunity to interview some of my friends who are quite popular on TikTok. One of them is named Selena, one's named Benji. You might have seen them on Your Fear You page. Page, and we asked them, what's your thoughts of the TikTok epidemic? But whenever I had like a video that would do really well, I would see like, oh, people like this. How can I make something similar to that that's different? You know how right now there's all the dancers on TikTok? Well, they'll, they'll do like dances over and over. Mm -hmm. But the difference is they're like doing it in different outfits or with different people or in different locations. So it's kind of like the same thing. But let's say like I did a video making flower freckles, painting them on my face. People really liked it. So I was like, oh, what if I put real flowers? So then I put real flowers and then people liked it again. So it's like kind of just seeing what people like and that I post and just recreating it in a different way. It's still making stuff I like at the same time. So like it's like a mashup of both things, like strategy and also just my career. Outlet. Also, I learned that when it comes to trends, that not to push yourself to be to like do every trend just because you think you have to, because that won't really work all the time for you. And also, if you're not liking the trend, but you're just doing it because it's a trend on TikTok, it won't do well for you because people will see and like your followers, they don't follow you because they want to follow some, they want to see stuff that you don't like, they want to see stuff that you like. So I can only imagine being a TikToker is a lot of pressure, right? Because TikToks are so fast moving, if you're literally not getting a viral banger after every single one, you're basically becoming irrelevant. Honestly, it's really dehumanizing and it takes away a lot of creative control from making TikToks, right? If you're pressured just to make videos that pop off and you know, you've know you gotten success, and all you have to do is just make that same video, it makes you less excited to make TikToks. And that's why you see a lot of burnout and, and people maybe just stop creating content. I'll have to just interject because I have a TikTok account. We hit over 80,000 followers. So thanks so much for that, guys. But I remember, 
remember like the only reason why I really popped off for TikTok, as you might know, is for my Starbucks videos. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll quickly explain. But basically I made these drive through Starbucks video a few months ago and they hit millions and millions of views. And ever since then, I never really experimented with anything new because I just wanted to keep getting viral hits. Who knows why? And I realized like at the freaking 100th video that this is not my passion and I wanna make more meaningful content. But if you're someone who's stuck and fixated on a certain path, you can identify yourself as a Starbucks girl or whoever just because you know it works. Now, the problem with this is not necessarily anything big, but mentally, you know, you're not going to create content that you love. And because of that, you're most likely not going to keep going and persist. I think we've seen a ton of YouTube burnout before in the past, whether it's your OG creators that don't make videos till this day. But as you know, it's so important as a creative or entrepreneur or anything to do something that you love and it's cons gonna consistently give you energy. And I know for a ton of us, this TikTok epidemic or this repetitive TikTok also as a viewer is quite annoying, right? We wanna see innovative content. We don't wanna see the same thing over time. So as we're trying to balance the algorithm to make viewers happy, but also to make ourselves happy, I definitely think in the midst of this, it's affecting mental health. If you guys wanna see the full interviews of Selena, Benji, and a ton more creators, go check out my second channel called The Green Room. The full interview will be linked there. So check it out after this video. A lot of people from this app, like they get brand deals and all that stuff. And like, that's great. Like I get brand deals, like I love doing them. So I started noticing that the videos that did best for me were ones that took a trend and made it a little different. I was getting a lot of videos that went really viral, like a million likes, but like, it, they didn't really count as viral because no one was following me from them, you know? So the last thing I wanna talk about is what to do when you see the epidemic of the same content repeating. Now, as a creator, the number one thing I want you to take away, guys, is feel free to experiment. I think so often, you know, although TikTok's still a fun platform, we take ourselves so seriously on there. There's nothing wrong with making other videos, experimenting with other types, just to kind of express yourself. And during this time of quarantine, you know, the TikTok is made to have fun. If your own self is not having fun, it really defeats the purpose and long-term is not a good strategy. Now, if TikTok is your business slash like full-time income, I do have to say it is so important to know that you literally cannot control the algorithm. The only thing you can do as a creator is control how often you experiment and learn from your past videos, right? You can't control the outcome. You can only control the work you put in. So because of that, for anyone who's maybe stressed about their YouTube videos, TikTok or whatever, just realize that you cannot control the algorithm. Focus on these three things, right? Research other creators maybe on what content they're making. Secondly, also experiment with content that you love. And lastly, don't be afraid to every day show up and post. I think it's so important as an entrepreneur myself, you know, that sometimes I don't feel like making videos or feel like going in my business. I do ha run a few companies and they're like, I don't feel like going to work. Like, I feel like a ton of my team and employees would be like, what the heck, Jade? Like, right? So it's so important to treat your TikTok as a business as well. Now, if you're not at the stage yet, don't worry. It's probably most of us are doing it for fun, but I know a ton of my friends that are on the green room are kind of experiencing this kind of stress. So literally guys, all of us are so young at this point. Don't be afraid to experiment and don't be so hard on yourself because you, you can't control everything. I do have to say guys, due to the coronavirus, my personal business has been affected a lot. One of my companies is called Eat Like. We're a food subscription box and a lot of our orders are backlogged. We have to basically hold off shipping any orders. And for this time, it's really scary. But I realized like this is something that I is out of my control. And the more I try to control what you can't control, you're going to get burnt out and stressed. So what I did is essentially, you know, held operations for that company and try to focus on things that I could control, which is making content, making videos like this and interacting with you guys as much as possible possible during this time. So with that story, I just wanted to teach you guys that even if shit hits the fan and things don't go your way, it's important to know that sometimes it's not your fault. Like for some reason, I blamed the success of everything I do on myself. And realistically, that's not, first of all, right. Because like, that's just a lot of ego for myself if I can control everything, right? But the second thing is luck and timing has so much to do with it. And it's literally nothing you can do. Sounds frustrating, but I just recommend for a creator to always put in the work and control your input, but you can't control your output. Just remember that guys. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, hey Jade, I don't actually make content, nor do I give a shit. I don't know how I found this video. Well, as a viewer, I do have one more takeaway for you. So if you're someone who consumes content, but you don't really make any, I do have to say, give your favorite creator empathy. If they mess up, just like give them that space because at the end of the day, I've seen so many creators dehumanized just because they're an influencer. And I have a whole video about how that's happening. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put it in the description box. But if you're a viewer or a fan, just give everybody space and time to be themselves. And I really believe that there's just so much dehumanization as influencers that I want to make this video to tell you guys to obviously persist in your goals but also to be mindful of others and if with that being said i want to shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode
Now guys, if you want to be the next comment winner, I essentially pick one of you guys every single time. So comment below your personal thoughts. Have you seen a change in TikTok being super repetitive? And personally, if you're a creator, let me know if you have any stories that resonate with this of how you combat the TikTok epidemic. I love you guys so, so much. Please give this video a like, subscribe. See you guys in the next one and I'll see you very soon. Peace.